often we have to be careful of who we elect. And many times people say, well, give them a chance. And gun owners in Orange County, California did so when they elected or didn't get out to stop the election of, whichever way you want to go with this, Senator Min. Senator Min, who is the architect of Senate Bill 264, which deals with ridding gun shows from state-owned and possibly county-owned properties. We're talking about this because Senate Bill 264 is still trying to make its way through the legislature to the governor's desk. If it gets there, odds are Governor Gavin Newsom will sign it into law. But what we want you to realize is Senator Min has been less than honest, and we're going to break this down for you of how many different lies, yes, I'm using the word lie, that he has t done over and over again in this process and how the far left of which he's a part of is trying to use every dirty tool in the book to convince the general public that they're doing the right thing when they're creating this mess. Yeah, it's a huge mess and an inch given and a mile taken. I mean, the, this guy is, is a freshman uh, in the Senate this year and he wasted no time jumping on the bandwagon of, of anti-Second Amendment legislature, uh, probably the most common uh, play used in the playbook trying to get gun shows recently um, taken out of uh, state property. And what ends up being really sad is that they, you know, they, they make this claim that their overall goal is to reduce gun violence. Um, we see study after study that just shows that guns that show up in crimes are not purchased from gun shows. There was a there was a Department of Justice report in 2016 that said less than one percent of firearms nationally, and that's nationally. So that's where states have a lot more lax laws than California. It's probably even less in California, uh, but less than one percent are actually used in in crimes. So what exactly is the agenda here? Well, and I think before we, we get to the agenda, I want to further break down what you just you know, were talking about. Kevin, tell each of our listeners exactly how that 2016 study was done, because it is unique. It does talk to each of you with a talking point that is absolutely empowering to getting our side's message across to the average layperson. Well, yeah, and here's, here's the deal. It breaks down like this. Uh, we're consistently told that we are proposing new pieces of legislation in order to reduce uh, uh, gun violence and gun crimes in this state. Uh, what's troubling to me is that the mass majority of these laws that they're proposing attack the legal process of purchasing a firearm. Now, in 2016, the Department of Justice produced a report where they interviewed hundreds of thousands of inmates. And what was discovered there is that less than one and a half percent of the firearms used in the crimes that those inmates committed were actually purchased legally. Wait, I want to make sure I get this right. So the researchers went into the prison system. Yeah. And then they sat across from convicted criminals and said, hey, bud, where did you get your firearm? And these convicted criminals could have said, oh, at the gun store, at the gun show, but they didn't? They didn't. Uh, you know, but wait, how could that be possible? Because according to people like Senator Min, gun shows are where those criminals get their guns. Well, according to Senator Min, those interviews wouldn't have been possible because he would have been you know, trying to get those people released from jail. Ah. However... Yeah, I mean, th this is kind of where the lie comes into place. We're consistently told that these laws promote, you know, safety, but you're literally only attacking 1.5% of the problem. You know, I, which means you're disarming the other 98.5% who are law abiding on a lie. Well, that's that's part of the the cycle that we're kind of producing here. Not only are we aiming at those law-abiding citizens, in many of these situations, we're actually making these law-abiding citizens criminals just for owning what they already own. But again, I, I can't stress this enough. And if you want to talk about Senate Bill 264 um, and and the proposition that's assumed with it, I mean, gun shows is even less. 1.5 percent is of all of all firearms used. Only 1.5 are purchased legally. It's even less for gun shows. It was like 0.8% of firearms used in crimes were purchased at gun shows. And I want to make a point on that. 
that was again a nationwide study, California already has the most stringent firearms laws at gun shows where gun, there is no gun show loophole. There hasn't been a loophole for decades. And so when they keep, you know, rebringing these old arguments up, these old arguments don't apply to California and haven't, like I said, for decades, Kevin. For decades. And, and you know what? We have some great people who want to engage uh, in business and they spend a lot of time and in a lot of situations, they spend a lot of money abiding by the regulations that are set forth before them in gun shows because they enjoy the community and they want to continue to contribute to the community. But again, I, I come back to the whole motive. You know, I, I think that we should be asking Senator Min, if you are really trying to reduce uh, gun crime in California, why are you taking aim at 0.8% of the problem when you could be taking aim at the other 99%? You know, you hear Kevin almost every week on our show talk about talking to people. And this past weekend, Kevin, this very subject came up when I was talking to people about this. And I got the, the age-old arguments, well, give Senator Min a chance because, you know, he's trying to keep firearms from getting in the wrong hands. And again, reiterating, this does nothing on that. In fact, I would argue the opposite. It keeps law-abiding citizens who may need firearms to be able to protect themselves, make it harder on them than it is for a criminal to buy a firearm illegally on the black market, where 98.5% of them make those transactions. And I, I would like to remind each and every one of you that some of those transactions that came from government scams done by the you know United States when they're trying to sell fast and furious firearms. <laughs> um, you know, but I also want to go to the second part of this is so argument A, if we were to look at a standard debate, would be, you know, get rid of gun shows off of state and county properties. Taxpayer dollars shouldn't be spent on that. And I want to slow us down as we break this down. The argument the left is now using is because they realize the firearm safety thing didn't really play well during COVID. We had one point something million new people come out who are traditionally center left who bought firearms that said, yeah, that argument doesn't make sense. So now they're pivoting. And I want to point the pivot, Kevin. The pivot is now to say, oh, your taxpayer dollars are going to help kill people and to cost us so much money. And we saw this as we've talked on, on another episode about the city of San Jose setting this up. But now let's look at Vallejo. What Vallejo is saying is, oh, so we're on county property. And if this gets too costly we might have to shut gun shows down. Well, yeah, I mean, you you point out that we're always saying talk to people and, and you can talk to people about what's currently going on. You can talk to people about what's happened in the past. It's important to continue talking to people though because arguments change, they morph over time. If something's not working for a, a specific agenda, they're gonna change the argument to try and continue that agenda. That seems to be what's taking place here. You've got Senate Bill 264 saying they don't want um, the government contributing financially to gun shows. Uh, you're seeing the same thing in San Jose where they're trying to create an ordinance for people to pay for you know the debt that gun violence has plagued their city with, which is just extremely unrealistic. And, and yeah, now we have the Vallejo gun show uh, where you kind of have an artificial cycle that's being created here where you have politicians coming out and saying, you know, this is the, this sort of thing is going to cost our uh, county money. But the reason why it's going to cost the county money is because they're going to need to outfit it with more law enforcement. The reason they're going to need to outfit it with more law enforcement is because they're expecting protests. And let's talk about where those protests come from. The anti-Second Amendment community. Yeah. Who made the claim this week of, oh, we're coming to protest that you're going to be selling firearms because... That leads to white supremacy. So they even put the racism card into this. And obviously that's going to cue up much of the media to pre-write a story as they often do and look for the, the great picture quote to back that story. But all this is make-believe. And it's make-believe because literally the left is manufacturing, oh, we're going to go for the taxation argument. And but the only way we can cost more money is if we have to have more law enforcement there for the public safety to get away with it. Well, how do we get more law enforcement there? We have to have 
the potential for violence. So we'll create that by inviting groups to protest, which sets everything up to become a self-fulfilling prophecy to their favor. And one of the best ways that each of you that lives up, you know, within say a hundred miles of, of, uh, you know, Vallejo is go to the gun show this weekend, show up, be civilized and show the public that this is nothing but a bunch of malarkey. There's other terms I'd love to use, but I'm trying to be polite. Um, but this is, this is just a false narrative that they're trying to create. And if we stay at home, if you don't show up, you are basically joining the other side and, and your silence. What we need is not for you to be vocal and obtuse, but to just go to the gun show, support it, you know, show people that this is a, a wonderful family time. Um, and it has nothing to do with white supremacy, racism, or anything else. For those of you of color, I'm going to encourage you, do not allow them to push you to, to stay back at home. That in and of itself, in my book, is racist. Um, I think that you need to be out there. You need to show them who you are and that you believe in the same constitutional rights because our constitution is not for any one color, any one you know, religious belief, any one economic profile. It's for everyone. Well, that's what we, yeah. the people, means. Rick, I, I know that I know that you did debate in college, and so you're probably more familiar with this than a lot this idea than a lot of other people. But when you're debating somebody on a stage, you're not trying to sway the other person on stage. No, nope. you're trying to sway everybody in the audience. Yep. So I mean, we need to recognize, and, and I mean, you've been to gun shows. I've been to gun shows. You and I can attest all day that there are people from every every walk of life, every every color, every orientation, whatever you want to say. Um, everybody goes to, you know, everybody from every walk of life goes to gun shows. Uh, they are not aiming at the people going to gun shows for this message. They are hoping that the mainstream media picks this up, whether it be a newspaper, an online article, or on the TV, so that they can sway the people at home that don't actually know these things. So again, it, it does come down to talking to people. We need to spread these messages. We need to start getting good stories from the Second Amendment community. And we really need to start showing um, outwardly that how I inclusive we actually are. And you know, how, how oriented towards safety that we are. I think these are things that we need to start talking about more. CRPA is going to be there at the Vallejo Gun Show this week, which is put on by one of our favorite promoters, Co of the West Productions. And I'm going to close this down with this, this quote. I think arguably one of the most brilliant men in the last century was Albert Einstein. And he said the definition of insanity was doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome. Over and over again, you and every other member of our Second, Second Amendment community has been silent. And to go back to college debate, Kevin, we used to say silence is admission. If the other side was silent, we would tell the crowd they didn't put anything up against this argument. Therefore, it's fact to get the crowd to vote our way. That's exactly what happens in the court of public opinion. When you are silent, you are saying you agree with the statements being made against you. The days of being silent are over. Be at the Vallejo Gun Show and support your gun rights.